stop, axe time. Let's talk about axes, two-handed axes in particular. Uh, the historical sources are not terribly comprehensive on that. They deal mainly with pole axes and halberds, at least when it comes to the European uh, medieval and Renaissance manuals. And from the Viking period, we have nothing. We don't know exactly how they fought because they didn't leave us first-hand sources as such, just some you know, stories, basically. But there are certain biomechanical rules, if you will, or constraints that guide how you can use one of these, because you're dealing with a pretty long handle that applies to you know, all kinds of pole arms. Uh, for example, uh, when whenever somebody says, oh, you're holding this thing wrong, like a, a staff in particular is a good example, because there are different ways of gripping a staff, depending on wh whether you're using a Japanese bow staff or a European quarter staff, uh, and same here. So how do you grip it? What's the right and the wrong way? Depends on what you're doing, that's the problem. So depending on what I'm doing, I may hold it pretty low, I may choke up on it, I may have the, the hands further apart, you know, closer together, I may grip it with my main hand on top, I may grip it the other way around. So let's take a look at some of the options here and when you would use what. So, if I'm facing somebody here, like old Bob over there, depending on what I want to do, I would hold it differently. Like, if I want to strike him from my right side to his left, I may start in a guard like this, for example, just step forward and cut down like that. And ideally, the left hand is, is what mainly drives the force, that's what, that's what generates the force, and the right hand is the one that guides it, that makes sure that it's properly aligned, basically, so that I don't strike him like with, with the flat of the blade or anything like that. But what do I do if I want to strike the other side? What people tend to do is this kind of number here. And that is not great, because now you're all twisted. So this is a very awkward way to, to strike from that side. So how do, how do you deal with that? Well, there's two main ways. You can either do an undercut instead. So this will basically just be the reverse of a strike from the right side. So you can, in that case, you can try to either impact with the top horn of the axe or with the edge. So just that's also a good way of, of dealing with any kind of follow-up. So let's say I strike and he evades that by stepping back and then he tries something and I'm just like, nope, just come right back up. The other way is, well, switch it. So that's what you often see in the manuals, main hand either on top or at the bottom, depending on what they're doing. So in this case, it's much more effective for me to throw this, the strike from the left side, if I have the, the right hand actually at the bottom, because then they're, they're not crossing. So either downward or upward, this is way more effective. That way you can turn your body into it well. The, the arms are evenly spaced. You get maximum kind of power as opposed to trying to cross it over and then it's just misaligned and biomechanically not as effective. In a fight, of course, things happen that are suboptimal sometimes, but that's a general idea. And the other thing is the hands should be mobile. You want to be, you know, running up and down the shaft. Yeah, yeah. And be able to adjust it according to what you're what you want to do. So let's say I start out this position where I have the maximum force and a strike, but let's say he moves in on me and I need to do something about it. So now, boom, I would simply move my hands to expose more of the bottom end of the handle 
and then I can strike with the butt end or I can I can push with it things like that there are several techniques in the manuals that show the use of the butt end for striking hooking you know controlling the opponent like stepping behind them taking them down or also parrying with it what I can also do is deflect with the butt end and then either strike like this or come around like that you can also do this kind of kind of block but the problem is if you do that against another axe wielder this can happen for one the axe will reach over top but the other thing is i got this right here and i can either wrench it away or i can thrust with the blade now the axe is pretty handy in a lot of ways where you can hook with the blade either top or the bottom so one thing i can do is if i see there's a, a strike coming in from this side uh, rather than simply trying to to meet it like this what i can do is the strike comes down i catch it with my blade and i push it down which will direct it into the ground basically if they, they swung hard and then i can come back in but of course if you're really mean you can also hook behind the neck you can imagine how pleasant that would feel to have that dig into your neck and you know control somebody that way there's a lot of really neat things about an axe that you can do that are not available the same way with a sword but there's also plenty of things that you can do with a sword that you can't with this uh, like for example you know thrusting depending on the type of the axe is going to be nowhere near as effective like with this for example <clears throat> you can see this this widens pretty quickly so this is not going to to enter very far but you can push them away you can you know, crack bones potentially there, there's still plenty of ways in which this could be used in either on the battlefield or in one-on-one -on -one duels including of course hooking shields shields weapons all of that and th in that case hooking either the the shield or the weapon and then just pushing in like that is perfectly viable the drawback of course is you always have to be worried about your hands there's just nothing really protecting them other than the top of the axe this is why you can you can scoop attacks this way without having to worry too much about your hands but of course um, that's the issue anytime you wanted to parry like this or block rather statically block like that if you misjudge it or if the opponent's weapon hits it and then deflects and hits the hand that's not fantastic so the hands are certainly more vulnerable mosquitoes i hate you uh, anyway so more vulnerable but it depends on how you do it if you keep your if you do a good job at keeping your hands safe it's generally shouldn't be too big of a deal cut 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 and if you notice here i'm turning my body into it so i power it with the core as opposed to just just the arms because this is way weaker than this and this is very powerful if you put your body weight into it and really rotate into it this devastating as you can imagine so yeah that's about it if there's any other things uh, you would like me to talk about or show with axes or anything else feel free to typey typey in the comments and discuss and all of that kind of nonsense and uh yeah that's it get out of here